Let me tell you a story about the Jedi. Now, yes, my name really is Jedi. It's short for Jedediah. So, we're going to go back. I'm been a mutant born differently than everybody else. Like, when the development, I had gills that they had to remove that you can see the scar on my neck. I had horrible allergies and asthma as a little kid. I had to fight for every breath I took. So I'm willing to put forth the effort to do what it takes to build New Atlantis. Now, you're probably wondering what is New Atlantis and how did I come along with it? So let me tell you a story. When I was a Boy Scout, and being raised native, one of the elders took me on a traditional, well, more accurately, they sent me on a traditional Native American vision quest. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is one of the most difficult, torturous experiences a human can go through. First, you go down to water for a week, so no food, no nothing. Seven days. Then they throw you in a sweat lodge which is a super hot steam room, and they keep you there for hours and dehydrate you. Then they throw you in a lake or a cold river to shock you. <laughs> now you are cleansed and purified. You can do the real ritual. So that was just a prep for the torture that's coming. So I had to walk into the woods with a prayer pipe and draw a circle around me with a stick. And I was instructed to stay in that circle with no one around to the end of the sunset on the fourth day, praying for a vision. No food, no water for four days. And, you know, I'm getting it's almost sunset on the fourth day. I still haven't had a vision. Like, God, creator, I'm giving my all and we're getting to sunset. I think I'm drawing my last round. <gasps> and then flash! I have the vision of how everything is connected in the universe. I see society thousands of years in the future, you know, our flying ships, our floating islands, and I'm bringing back and I have spent the last 25 years reverse engineering what I saw in that vision that day. I've studied physics, basic structural engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, architecture, material sciences, you know, everything I can possibly do. The green energy, hydroelectric, of course, is one of my favorite until we get to zero point, but y'all ain't ready for that yet. Let's just stick with what is here now. We have the technology already available to end the world's made up intentional energy crisis and provide enough water to turn the Sahara Desert back into a tropical paradise. The technology is available now to fix the planet and preserve humanity for the next thousand years. Let me tell you a story. Imagine a safe, tropical civilization. You go to the restaurant, you walk away, leaving your stuff at the table. You run into friends and like four hours later, you come back, your stuff is still there. You look at your bill and it's in silver. So real money hard money that you can't fake. And it says, you know, a mere 11 grams for a wonderful, you know, five course meal with a bottle of wine, with friends enjoying. And when you get to the tax part, it says never, never any tax. Cause that's the way it was meant to be. Cause taxation is that. Thank you Dan Berman for that phrase. <laughs> Now, the islands are floating cities on the sea that are protected 
from climate change, rising sea levels, and everything else. So you are safe. You have virtually unlimited energy from the combination desalinization hydroelectric power plant that I designed and that is replicated on the outside to look like the Great Pyramid, to have rivers flowing from the center of the island, feeding life to the whole place that can get pumped out. We can use all the electric we have that will outdo for each island Niagara Falls. We will take the water, split it, releasing the oxygen into the air, and keeping the hydrogen, recombining that with CO2 we pull from the sea and the air to create our own carbon neutral jet fuel and diesel. So no more need to drill. We are completely green. It'll last a thousand years. Now, you're probably wondering, how is it even possible for us to build this? How are you gonna build floating cities? Well, you know, first we got to scale it down. So you're going to do smaller floating prototype platforms. We'll do smaller things like floating docks. And with my patent pending hexagonal interlocking block system, AKA the hip, because the hip is hip. These blocks can build the walls of houses with robotic and unskilled labor. So anybody can build their own home from scratch, like putting together Lego blocks. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now, the blocks, hopefully we'll get them at Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever, and people around the world can get them, build their own structures while we're building the islands. So it all comes, starts with the little block.